Hi there and welcome back. Beautiful jellyfish mould. Look at this. Still following with our black and white theme. And two items that were from the jellyfish kit. Now this kit we bought originally from Jewels at Resin Jewels. Uh, all, everything that we've used will be linked in the description box. I'm not sure if there are any more of these kits left, um, but these are just elements from it. Not everything we use today will have been from the kit, um, but everything we do use will be linked in the description box below. This mould is gorgeous. Now, all I'm doing here, you've seen me do this before, I've got a dry bristled paintbrush, just a regular brush there, dipping it into that lovely little package of glitter. <laughs> and just brushing it on to what I can only describe as the frilly petticoat part of the jellyfish. <laughs> I know that's not anatomically correct, but that's what I'm going to call it. So as you can see already, some of it has, because glitter is going to do this and it's quite fly away, and it seems to be attracted to silicon moulds. Everything's attracted to a silicon mould. Dog hairs, pet hairs, cat hairs in particular. Um, it's actually already adhered itself, some of the glitter, to the head part of the mould. So I've decided, what the heck, let's add a bit more. <laughs> um, this was very much uh, organic. Uh, I knew more or less what I wanted to do, but it developed as time went on. So there we go, we're just doing exactly the same thing as I've done. I'm just literally flicking a little bit of the glitter off of the brush and into the mould there. Onto the tentacle parts of the mould. I'm sure that is. I'm sure it's jellyfish have tentacles. Anyway, if you know the proper anatomical uh, terms for jellyfish or parts of the jellyfish body, please put them in the comments because I'd be quite interesting to know. <laughs> but anyway... There we go. As you can see what I've done, we've got a little bit of, in, of, of effect there in the head, a lot in the frilly petticoat part, and a few little bits there in the tentacle part of this mould, which is very, very shiny. Very shiny. So this is also now from Resin Jewels. And again, all I'm going to use, I've got a slightly smaller brush. It's a little bit of a stubby brush, as in the bristles aren't very long. Um... And it's a bit more firm than the other ones I've got. So all I've done is dipped it into that uh, little package of mica. Or I think this might actually be pigment powder. And I'm just literally dabbing it onto the petticoat part of this mould, the jellyfish. And can you then see what I'm doing? I'm just brushing it into the mould. So this is forming our black, the black part. Because this is, again, part of our black and white themed collection or series of things and projects that we're making so we're allowing ourselves to use black white and one or possibly two other colors at an absolute push so here we go we got your black we've got the glitter and there are lots of little colors in that glitter but we're calling the glitter is one represents one color now that looks beautiful on that frilly part there like the petticoat frilly part I'm also going to do the same thing just on a few areas, just trying to highlight the tentacle part of the bottom of this mould. So can you see what's happening? Now to me, I must admit, that really doesn't look very black. It looks more like a dark pewtery colour, but it's, it's sublime. It's beautiful. And all I'm trying to do here is just accentuate some of the parts of the mould so you can see more of the detail. Almost like if you were if you were drawing a picture or you were trying to colour in and shade in with light and dark and highlights and, and so on and contrast if you were drawing a still life version of this. So in real life if you were drawing it on a piece of paper. So there we go. It also helps to give it more of a 3D look, so it's making it stand out from the mould. I'm just hoping that the finished piece also reflects the same thing. So what colours, if you were doing this, what colours would you use? Would you stick to the same thing that we've done? Would you restrict yourself to just three colours? Or would you go all out and have it all colours of the rainbow? Um, would you add glitter? Would you add, would you use metallic powders? I must admit metallic powders really appeal to me um at the moment <laughs> for this as well as a couple of other things that you'll see coming up soon a bit later on same black and white theme series spoiler alert, might be some hedgehogs 
some hedgehog tea lights maybe. Uh, don't forget, if you don't want to miss out on our videos, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. It's free to subscribe. It's free to set up your own YouTube account. Uh, hit the notification bell because if you don't hit the notification bell you won't know when we're uploading videos and we do tend to upload them at least three times a week Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays at 5pm UK time we do also take part in collaborations um, hopefully you'll have seen our collaboration video if this one hasn't gone out before it if it has gone out before it the collaboration is coming this Saturday this Saturday, which I think is the 12th, apologies if I got that date wrong, but it is coming this Saturday and that's a collaboration Halloween themed event. Um, I'm not doing the demo for that one, Wayne is. So Wayne is one of our other um, creators here at Lottie Jasmine Designs and he's also my hubby. Um, he's very, very talented. You will know it's him because you'll see his signature black and glitter sparkle nails. Yes, you heard it, folks. <laughs> so join us. Please join us for that. We'll have a whole host of other artists all taking part in the collaboration event. So you can do quite a lot of binge watching of videos. What a way to spend your Saturday. Can't think of anything better myself. Especially if you've got lots of rain and cold weather like we have. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour a little bit of clear resin in and around just over where I've put more of the concentrate of glitter. Now I'm hoping that that is going to keep the glitter where it is. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Let's see. The resin we're using for this one is Tea Expert Resin. It's a one-to-one -one mixing ratio and it's our go-to brand of resin currently. Uh, another one that we'd highly recommend is Mold, so that's M-O-L-D-D, -D. lovely resin. We've had the pleasure of using it on a couple of occasions, um, and who knows, in the future, we hope to be using more of that. Now, what we've added into here for our other black colour is some liquid pigment black, and that is from the Skulls kit. It's a kit that we purchased from Jules and at Resin Jules and Helen at Helena, sorry, at Resin Detra Supplies. I don't know if they have any more skull kits left. It's worth checking out. You can contact them. All their contact info will be in the description box along with everything, details and links for everything that we're currently using. We do have a couple of coupon codes there as well. One is for Timu and one is for BB Craft, who we very, very recently done a collaboration with. Um, so so about a week or so ago on a Sunday, we did an unboxing to reveal what we had been given by them. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's an unboxing reveal video. It's well worth looking at it. So check out our playlist and why not hop on over there and have a look and see what we were, we were gifted by them. We will be bringing some videos using those products very very soon <laughs> so stay tuned so all I've done now to this resin so this is going to make up our white and I've added some white acrylic paint and a little bit of the white mica powder there now it's just a tiny bit you must make sure you're not adding more than I think it's 10% yeah 10% of your res of, of your pigment whether or mica powder to the amount of resin that you've got. So we're absolutely fine there. Now, all I'm gonna do, now this was very much, I'm gonna make this up. I don't know, I haven't seen any other artists do this, but why not? Let's see if it works. So, here we go. I've dipped a coffee stir stick, a wooden coffee stir stick, or you can use whatever tool you are most happy using and I've just dipped it in that mix of the black liquid pigment in some clear resin and I'm just literally dotting and dragging it carefully though being very gentle across the surface of the mold and then through the center don't forget you've got that collect that little collection there that little pool of clear resin so I'm just just trying we just I thought we'd just see is this going to work what sort of effect is it going to give 
So we're very much learning at this stage um, as to what's going to happen or not happen. So then I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Why not? Let's go for it. And did exactly the same thing on the tentacle part of the mould. As you can see there, I'm just going to turn it round. So that's the way it's sideways on. But, you know, it's having a rest. It's lying down having a rest. Anyway, moving on, Laura. Let's be a bit more sensible. So I'm just sort of doing that all the way onto the mould. I was very intrigued to see whether or not it would stay like that or if it would just do what resin tends to do and just mix and, um, you know, move with any other resin that's added to it. I mean, the only way to ensure that doesn't happen if I was then, after I'd done this stage, to stop, to let it cure and then to go in with the final layer of resin afterwards. But I continued on. I do rather like this effect though. It's very much, is it Jackson Pollock? Who used to do a lot of the, I want to call paint splat sort of, uh, uh, of uh, paint splat uh, pieces, artistic pieces on canvases and things. I think it's Jackson Pollock. Not to be confused with the Impressionist painters like Claude Monet, um, who also did a lot of, um, of paintings using what look like, close up, a selection of little dots of colour. You may have, well, may have well seen the one of the lily pads, it's a famous one from Monet's garden uh, in France. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I'm fascinated by artists and things like that. So there we go. That's that white. It looks almost like it's got a pink tinge to it, doesn't it? So carefully now pouring it in to the mould. I think if I was going to do this effect again, even if it was diff with different colours, I would let it cure and then go in the following day because as you may be able to see underneath my hand, it's just pushing the resin up. It's pushing the resin, the black resin, all up and then it's collecting. And at this point, I did think, oh no, what's happened? Um, yeah. So I thought, okay, why not? Let's see if this actually does anything. Let's drag it down. So we're dragging the black that's collected around the top of the white back into the white. There we go. I mean, it may it may do what I want it to do. It may have absolutely no difference whatsoever. <laughs> but either way, I thought, let's just, let's go for it. Let's go for it. What is the worst that can happen? <laughs> so there we are. That's all that I had left. So obviously you can see there's lots of um, bits of the mould which haven't got resin in. I do need to just quickly make up some more white, which is what I did. And then add it, pour it into the rest of the mould, just carefully going as you do. There we are. Filling and making sure that you fill up all the tentacle areas, all the parts of the head. The little frilly petticoat part is now completely covered. The discoloration you can see there in the head is where we had that um, pool of uh, the clear resin over the um, glitter and there's the white just mixing in with it. Now, can you see the where it's traveling? There we go. It will continue to do that until the mold is completely full. I do rather like that effect. It's almost a ghost like, isn't it? Is there such a thing as a ghost jellyfish? Although in real life they are actually pretty see-through, aren't they? And they're certainly the ones I've seen are. There we go. Almost done with the resin part. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a swirl round. A little bit more of a swirl round. Just trying to make it so that it wasn't quite... It was a bit more amalgamated, a bit more combined, mixed in, whatever you want to call it. So there we go. At 
absolutely looking really lovely so what we do also do I'm just going to top up now because it wasn't quite to the top with the rest of some clear resin there that I've got in my very very uh, bendy flexible silicon jug <laughs> which is a godsend but is also quite difficult to manipulate when you're trying to control the flow of resin which is quite often why I'll decant it into smaller silicon jugs just because they're easier to handle and easier to control there we go look at the way that's mixed very sort of like smoke is it smoke on water sort of effect and sort of stormy clouds in the sky there is definitely a marble like look coming there definitely but we'll see what happens when the resin has completely cured whether or not it looks like it's all pulled into the center again with the pigment colors and so on so at this point just going in again with the little stir stick making sure that it's not just large areas of clear resin that it has got a bit of white that's got a bit of the black the black a bit of the gray color of course if you're going to put white with black resin it is going to be gray at some point that's quite normal so there we go just around the edge of the mold making sure there are no little bubbles trapped anywhere because what you don't want is bubbles trapped in your work or at the edges of molds because then when it cures if you still got the bubbles there you're going to end up with a little sharp area and also you know the possibility of having to do a little bit of a patching up or repair job there we go so we do spritz the surface of all of our pieces with uh, some isopropyl alcohol uh, and that is just to disperse any of the um, bubbles that are on the surface now what I've also done here is I have just gone in with a little bit of the extra glitter and oh look do you remember the two the things there we used the leftover resin from before and we added some black and then we filled up those two coasters that's from a previous video now here we're just doing the demold now this is a good 24 hours later everything at the moment is taking longer to cure for us because it's colder weather there we go so as you can see it's a tiny bit bendy there so it's trying to be ever, ever so careful on these um, edge pieces where the tentacles are just to make sure that they don't uh, become too misshapen can you see how bendy that is there and I have to say once I finished this project I did then leave it to completely cure on a flat surface for another 12 hours and then it became completely solid it was completely cured then right so take remember take the mold away from your uh, piece not your piece don't try and pull the piece out of the mold so I can already see there is a little bit of uh, cleanup to do around the edges but that's absolutely fine it's only a tiny bit and then when it's completely cured we will just go around with the um, deburring tool now look at that I love the effect in the top of the head look at that that's beautiful gives it a real 3d effect unfortunately yet the white has pulled things into the surface into the center there not completely happy with that love the tentacles and love the frilly skirt petticoat part of this now it, it looks a bit odd and i thought i've still got some faux pearls so why don't i just decorate it up we'll put a few faux pearls in the top so i decided what i was going to put where and we're going to use uv resin as our glue to glue the faux pearls onto it now I'll give you a warning I do use that UV torch so there will be a bit of UV light coming up use the handheld torch or if you've got a lamp you can pop it under your lamp now using the tweezers trying to pick up these lovely little pearls we've used these pearls in previous projects if you check back through our autumn fall collection series I put them in some bowls and use just a different colorways that we've got now unfortunately you can't still get these we got these from Hobbycraft which is a retailer here in the UK uh, they're available in their high street shot, um, shops they've sorry they've got high street shops and they're also available online for make purchases um, I'm sure they probably do do international shipping but you'd need to check that out 
whoops, see as you can see, I'm chasing the pearls across the, my workspace area. Now, of course, you can get faux pearls from anywhere, Timu, Amazon, um, or you can, they might sell them in your local hobby uh, place, like Hobby Lobby if you're in the States, or Michael's perhaps, or anywhere else that you're able to get them from. Obviously, these are faux pearls. Uh, they're not real pearls. <laughs> um, and there, so we're just uh, curing it with the UV torch just to get it so that it is there and it is solid. So that's what I wanted to do. It made it look so that that white patch in the middle was more of a definite thing rather than a complete utter accident. It made it look so it was more definite. Now, I thought I need to put a few more of these lovely little pearls uh, elsewhere on the body parts of the jellyfish just so that it ties in. And it doesn't look like it's not supposed to be there, if you know what I mean. So I'm just putting a few on the tentacle area parts there and I will be curing those using the UV light again. So there we go. Just using the UV light there. Just a quick shout out to say hi to everybody that's joined us today. Whether you're in the live chat, hello to everybody in the live chat. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're not in the live chat and you are watching us live on the premiere, hello to everybody who's currently watching us too. If you're catching us um, and watching, if you've caught us and watching us on a recommendation from YouTube or after we've done our premiere, hello to you as well. If you haven't got a YouTube account, why not create one? it's free to do so, then why not subscribe to our channel? It's also free to do so. We do upload uh, videos, as I said, three times a week and usually Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays at 5 p.m. UK time. There we go. So just decided, shall I put some on the petticoat, the frilly petticoat part? And I thought, yes, no, I, I need to. I need to. Obviously, you don't have to do this bit. You can just leave it with your UV resin in it. If you're more than happy, then just leave it. Or you could add other things to it as well. Perhaps maybe if you've made some little shells out of uh, resin, those would look lovely. You could actually even make this and in the head section use the miniature shells that you can get um, in clear resin maybe with a bit of glitter that would look lovely if you did decide to do that then do wait for that area that first pour then to cure before then filling up the rest of the mold but look at that i think that's stunning oh we've got another escapee pearl there <laughs> Just got to pop that into place there. As you can see, I am wearing gloves. Do you make sure you take all the appropriate safety precautions when you're using resin? Make sure you wear gloves, the respirator mask and work in a well ventilated area. All the usual stuff that we say. Need to protect yourself when you're using um, this kind of product. We are hoping to bring to you a video where we're going to use, we're going to make some projects out of an eco resin. It is made by Hobbycraft. It's their own branded one. So we'll look at it. We'll look at what's uh, on the packaging, uh, what the instructions are. We'll look at the mixing ratio and then we'll make probably one or two things out of it. That video will be coming soon. Uh, for you to see. Again, we'll be doing black and white theme probably. And here's a close up, a little flyby of it. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Here we are in the finishing shot. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly loved making it. There we are. Look, stood upright. You could use this as wall decor. You could put it in a frame and put it on your wall, on a bookshelf, in a bathroom, in a study, anywhere in your home. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Hope to see you all again soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.